we saw in this climate a number of retailers under enormous pressure with COVID trying to reach their customers in what normally took seven days, yeah. taking three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. So how do you get around that? You get around that by getting closer to the customer and using an aggregated service of different delivery companies, not only your next day carriers, but also your actual stores to reach those customers directly. Hello and welcome to the Checkout Scout tent. Uh, today in the tent we have David Lynch from uh, Line 10 and Line 10 are doing a lot of exciting things in terms of um, revolutionizing order management and uh, delivery, connecting customers and retailers together um, more closely. So welcome David. Um, to kick off, is if you can tell us a bit about yourself and uh, your background and, and a bit about Line 10 please. Yeah sure, thank you for having me first of all. So uh, my background very briefly uh, I worked in Pernod Ricard for three years in uh, marketing and in sales, uh, on trade and off trade. Loved it. And uh, out of the blue, I was reached out to by an old friend working for a company called Line 10, five guys in a basement that said, hey, we're building something cool and exciting. Would you like to come along for the ride? And I said, sure. I moved to London from where I was living at the time, which was in Canada, uh, to what was a basement, what was five people uh, building something really exciting. Worked in sales for a period of time before moving into strategic development of new markets, finally moving into run operations for North America. Um, about line 10, very quickly, you're dead right. This is what we do. We connect retailers and customers, finding ways or as many ways as possible to bring them closer. And we do that through order management, through Line 10 online ordering. We do that through the point of sale integration system we hold, which is Line 10 Postbridge. So connecting order management systems into the point of sale in those local stores, in those restaurants. And finally, we do it through our delivery management platform. That is a same day and next day delivery management platform that orchestrates any delivery anywhere in the world. Like I said, bringing customers and retailers closer together. I think for me at the, the moment e-commerce is, is shifting and, and changing increasingly you know with, with more speed every day every week every year and there's you know at the moment with you know there's uh, brexit happening in the uk there's obviously the challenges from covid what are you, what's your take on some of the, the key challenges that you're seeing in uh, the, 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 the uh, challenging your customers and retailers at the moment i think the challenge we collectively in the e-commerce and delivery space what we will see is the ability to maintain the focus of the retailers on the digital space. So when COVID broke out, there was an immediate shift. There was a need to refocus and realign and think about how to better connect with customers online. That was the big focus. If you look at wine and spirits, bars and pubs, restaurants closed everywhere around the world. And now suddenly they were without this enormous volume, but also exposure to their brands. And so that shift led to an amazing focus and a desperate need that allowed businesses both fantastic, but also not so fantastic, interact with these amazing retailers. So I think the challenge is going to be maintaining their focus once lockdown ends, because they're going to want to reopen the bars and restaurants. They're going to want to bring customers into store. That's where they make their best margin. And so what's really, really important for retailers today in, in assessing those challenges is finding ways to ensure that their proposition, if it's an e-commerce engine or solution, if it's a delivery management platform, is thinking about how to make the digital experience as good as that experience or near to as good as that experience in store. That's, that's the big challenge I think e-commerce uh, businesses are going to see as we come out of lockdown. In terms of that space and that, that connecting the customer in final mile and, and, and um, I guess improving the delivery proposition, who's, who's doing that really well at the moment in your view? Which retailers are really knocking it out of the park? One of our partners, uh, Farfetch, are doing a great job, mostly because they're very agile. They're thinking on their feet all the time about how to better connect with customers. If it's using uh, our same day delivery uh, providers, for example, Farfetch are offering uh, services that allow you to try clothes on at home, something that was never thought of before. Um, you know, they're offering very agile return services where people can come and pick up clothes and drop back to a local boutique or store same day. And they're facilitating deliveries through a combination of warehousing and stores. And this is any retailer today that's thinking about the future in terms of the combination of 
digitizing themselves and their identity, but also maintaining their presence in store or, you know, in person needs to think about also how they use their retail stores, their, their, their outlets where their customers come and visit them as warehouse fulfillment centers. And I think the brands that we're working with today that are thinking about that and they're taking advantage of those stores uh, are going to do the best because we saw in this climate a number of retailers under enormous pressure with COVID trying to reach their customers in what normally took seven days, yeah. taking three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. So how do you get around that? You get around that by getting closer to the customer and using an aggregated service of different delivery companies, not only your next day carriers, but also your actual stores to reach those customers directly. Or if it's sizing up or sizing down, allowing a customer to change the size of a pair of pants or a t-shirt or a sweater or whatever it is, and interacting more closely to that customer, thereby reducing the risk of those central warehouse solutions. Which tech firms are doing a really good job at the moment. And I think Shopify, I would mention one, are doing a great job because they have and they're still enabling a space where creators of applications, creators of brands can come together and build really special partnerships. Um, I would also say that FlowSpace, a warehouse management platform in the US are doing a great job because they're enabling those that are not on Amazon, you know, uh, bring stock and resources closer to their customers. You know, I believe right now they might be as good as within 50 miles of every possible customer in the US, which is quite a powerful statement to make online. The companies that are doing an amazing job, including, you know, I'd like to say line 10, we're, we're finally there, are those thinking very, very carefully about execution. What do I mean by that? Well, you don't see it on TechCrunch. You don't see it on these websites about execution. You see fundraising. You see fancy new you know, partnerships and collaborations. What you don't really see is how these companies are actually, when they do make those deals up front, when those sales guys do all that hard work, how well they execute. And I think any company that is doing two things, being open-minded about the, the space we're in with COVID, if you're a retailer, but also thinking diligently about execution, those are the companies that are doing a really, really good job today. It ties a little bit into what Bezos, Jeff Bezos once said about thinking holistically and really focusing on the customer experience. Mm -hmm. But you can only do that if you think about execution. So I, I think for me, the next question uh, for you, David, is um, so we, we, we're going to open up the checkbook, 10 million pounds, drop it into your bank account. Money's no object. What e-commerce business would you set up with that investment? What I still think is a challenge in the market today is responsive technologies combined with the ability to enter any vertical. What do I mean by that? Imagine an online ordering journey for the likes of Five Guys or Taco Bell, but imagine the flexibility and responsiveness of that journey in fashion and apparel. I think there's still a lot of work that can happen in that space and that can be built out in that space. And I think there's an enormous opportunity for anyone uh, to create an e-commerce journey that is responsive, but vertical agnostic that allows a customer to upload, download, change, and have that flexibility. I'd probably look at building an e-commerce solution that isn't about being a core that adds adapters on top, but actually having the flexibility to switch on and off multiple verticals in multiple industries, multiple delivery propositions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with little or no time to do so. So like a fully integrated headless solution then? Essentially a fully integrated headless solution. So um, last question. So um, obviously at the moment we're, we're currently in a, a COVID lockdown. Um, so which is the first retailer or where's the first place you're going to go once you are allowed out the door? It's, it's no big fashion retailer brand. It's going to be a coffee shop. It's going to be a uh, flat white and, uh, you know, just sitting down outside and people watching. Thank you very much, David, for your time. I think some really interesting things there. Looking at um, obviously the, the conversation about how you're revolutionizing the um, that connection between customer and retailer and, and enabling the flexibility in, in uh, delivery mechanisms, mechanisms is really interesting. Um, some interesting conversation around the um, options available for um, uh, the customers in, in terms of, I think you were talking about um, shipping from stores to customer and, and from warehouses to customer, making sure that's as smooth as possible. So um, I'd like to thank you for your time. That was a really interesting chat, David, and I wish you well. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure.